Hello, and welcome to Lessons from the Lab. I'm Mary-Kate Nolan. I'm Fabiane Skokubia. And I am Mahshid Niknahad. Today's topic will address grind viscosity and what tools we have at our fingertips to reduce viscosity to make it either a more workable, flowable grind or potentially increase the solids to get better color development or hiding. Mashid, could you introduce what technology would yield this benefit? Wetting and dispersing additives are the platform that we first investigate when we have a grind viscosity issues. Generally, high grind viscosity is a sign of flocculation of the pigment particles. The wetting and dispersing additives are introduced into a grind or high shear dispersion phase of the formulation in order to properly uh, deflocculate and stabilize pigment particles. When pigments are introduced into the system, they are not primary particles, they are agglomerates. The agglomerates are groupings of particles that include the pigment, air, and moisture with cohesive forces that keep them together. We use the wetting and dispersing additives to displace the air and wet the agglomerate surfaces. Then we introduce some sort of mechanical shear to break up the agglomerates. Finally, the wetting dispersing additives have the benefits of stabilizing the pigment particles from the agglomeration. Thanks for that explanation. So Fabiana, can you talk about how we maintain the stabilization over time to prevent reagglomeration? Absolutely. We have three modes of stabilization, which all work as deflocculating mechanisms. And the first one is electrosteric repulsion. And here, uh, the additive builds a layer of electrical charge around the primary pigment particle. Other primary particles coated with the same additive have this outer charge, which repel the particles around and prevent the reagglomeration and this mechanism is generally more effective in aqueous systems. The second mechanism is steric stabilization. And steric stabilization is a factor of the bulkiness of the molecule. You have a pigment affinity group and a resin or a solvent affinity group, and the large chains of and bulkiness of the wetting and dispersing molecule prevent the primary particles from reaching each other. And lastly, the third mechanism, it's a combination of the two, and we call this electrosteric stabilization. This employs both steric hindrance and electrical repulsion to maintain the separation of the particles. So when we talk about grind viscosity, how exactly do the wetting and dispersing additives help to decrease that viscosity to make it more workable? Good question. Uh, removing the air from the pigment surface is the best process to see the viscosity reduction. So wetting out those pigments and properly deflocculating all of the pigment particles by creating primary particles is what drives this viscosity reduction. And why is this important for formulators? There are a number of reasons why this could be important to a formulator. The first is probably more critical for the manufacturing technicians. When making large-scale batches, time and energy are money, and if you have the ability to lower the viscosity and potentially grind the pigments at high shear for less time, or even turn down the intensity of your equipment, then you help your uh, company save money. The second is to make the grind easy to work with. It can be very challenging to transfer an extremely viscous grind into another vessel for mixing the letdown. And if you add the liquid resin into the viscous materials, it's a still challenge to homogeneous both. Think about when you are adding water into a thick dough. The water is likely sloshing around and be very difficult to incorporate into the dough. And this can be a very long process and uh, you want your pigment grind to be flowable and easy to manipulate. Third, uh, the viscosity of the material might be a limiting factor on how much pigment you are able to incorporate. Remember that pigments will drive the brilliance of your color and the hiding of your film. And if you are able to, uh, to boost the pigment loading levels at the same flowable viscosity, then you can improve the overall performance of the coating. In addition, uh, from an environmental standpoint, higher solid coatings tends to have lower VLCs so if you're looking to achieve high solids to help boost your sustainability 
and decrease our environmental impact, wetting and dispersing additives will help with that. Wow, a lot to think about and certainly many advantages of introducing these deflocculating additives into your coating system. I know we have quite a large portfolio of wetting and dispersing additives. How can our audience best select the additive for them and their system? We have many different avenues for our customers to navigate. So reach out to our help desk or contact your local sales representative. Those are easy ways to connect with us. In terms of looking our portfolio, there are a lot of products and chemistries available. Generally, the first three questions we will ask when we approach for a wetting and dispersion recommendations are what type of pigments are you dispersing? What is the end use application? And what type of resin systems are you working with? Pigments have various particle size, surface treatment, and cohesive forces. Generally, the smaller the particle size, the larger the cohesive forces means uh, they are more difficult to disperse and stabilize. The same additive that is effective for TiO2 and fillers uh, that are larger in size may not provide the necessary means to establish carbon black and organic pigments, which can be very difficult to wet out, deflocculate, and stabilize. We have uh, fatty acid chemistries, polymeric additives with various molecular weights and architectures, and control polymerized additives that have even greater precision to enhance properties beyond the primary function of deflocculating the pigments. In general, but not 100% exclusive, our fatty acid and phosphoric acid esters are designed to stabilize fillers and inorganic pigments like TiO2 in solvent-based system. Our polyurethane and hyperbranch technologies are designed to stabilize organic pigments and carbon blacks, mostly in solvent-based system. Polyacrylates are designed for aqueous system with various grades to address all types of pigments, and these newer control polymerized technology are uniquely engineered for various benefits beyond the deflocculation of challenging pigments. My recommendation would be to visit our site and explore our selection tools through the end use or reach out to our help desk or sales team. Yes, it can be challenging to navigate your selection choice, but you're right, we do have a lot of information accessible on BIC.com. It's difficult to make a blanket statement starting recommend, with starting point recommendations when we don't have the specific system information. Beyond reducing grind viscosity and potentially increasing the solids content, what are some of the other benefits of using deflocculating additives? Deflocculating additives will also provide the best color, hue, and brilliance of the pigments that you are adding to your system. They will help to achieve the desired coloristic properties and in addition, uh, fully deflocculating the particles will help to improve the hiding power and avoid the haze and maintaining the gloss. And how do we measure some of these properties in the lab? We have many different methods to evaluate full deflocculation and high performance in a coating. You can do drift, uh, color drift tests by color rub-ups uh, with the full shape and, and white reduction. And in addition, you can use a spectro guide to measure the delta E and also use other instruments to measure the gloss, haze, and transparency of the system if you are using a transparent pigment. Those are our most common test methods to evaluate deflocculation. Thank you both for your time and expertise today on how to reduce your grind viscosity by selecting the appropriate wetting and dispersing additives. As mentioned, we have a large portfolio of products. There are selection tools to help guide you and narrow your choices online, but we of course would love for you to reach out and connect with us directly. Looking forward to working with all of you and helping you make your product selection seamless.